welcome to the Nicholas County uh, Drug Court graduation. Um, today we are going to honor seven of our uh, Drug Court participants as they graduate and shine for all to see. I will tell you that being a part of Drug Court has been super special for me. It's like I get to watch people find their light and let it shine for all of you all to see. Um, it is an amazing opportunity for each and every one of these people to take advantage of, and it's an amazing opportunity for me and for the drug court team uh, to be able to participate in the lives of these people. Um, I would like to now introduce uh, the man that makes it possible, um, Judge Callahan. Uh, without him, we would not be able to have the treatment courts that we have and would not be able to provide an opportunity for people to find their light and share it with you. So, with that being said, let's get into this judge. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody, to our drug court graduation here. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank the team. Uh, we'll introduce the entire team to you here in just a little bit. And I want to congratulate the graduates, uh, first of all. Moving right along, anybody that's been to one of these before knows that I like to tell a joke or two, and today is no different. Does anybody know why you don't yell into a colander? You strain your voice. <laughs> but these graduates, uh, I'm very proud of them. I know them all. Uh, in drug court, I see them once a week, and that's part of accountability. They have to show up and be accountable, and they've done extremely, extremely well. Uh, these people have different lives now, and you probably see them over there shaking their heads right now, because they do have different lives. That's an example of several different things. First, it's an example of the hard work that these people put in to get through this program. It's not easy. They put in the work. They did all the right things. It's also an example that uh, this courts and this judicial system in this county is doing something about the drug problem in this county. And lastly, it's an example that uh, this program is working, and it can work, and these people are proof positive of it. <coughs> Does anybody know why it's so easy for a snowman to lose weight? The pound just melt off. <laughs> Some people are allergic to Christmas decorations. They call that tinselitis. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to congratulate all the graduates. I've gotten to know all of them, and like, like I said, they've all worked extremely hard. Uh, they put in the work. The team offers the assistance. Uh, it, it takes a team. We have about 28 people on our team. We'll say all of their names here in just a little bit. But without that team, without the probation officers, without the staff, this whole thing wouldn't work. And they've made it work for several years now. And we're up to 70-some graduates now, I believe. So uh, this problem does work. We are addressing the drug problem in this county, and it is working. We're putting people's lives back together. We're helping people put lives back together. They're doing it themselves. So with that, I would bring up uh, our guest speaker. Is it that time? This is Amanda Blankenship. She is a graduate of our program, who also has done extremely well. Come on. Hello, everybody. My name is Amanda, and I'm a former drug court participant. And I just thought it was important to come up here today and kind of share a little bit about my story and maybe offer some hope and a little bit of advice. So I started using when I was in junior high, so I have a really long history of drug use and losses and tragedies, as a lot of us in here do, that have been through that life. Um, I've lost cars, homes, all the belongings that went in them time and time again, friendships, relationships, my sanity, and most importantly, myself. I obtained unhealthy trauma bonds, relationships with other people like me, so my misery was always met with more misery. I always felt like this guy was came in. When drug court accepted me, I'd been living in a building in someone's backyard. I put myself in a bad situation, put my son in a bad situation, and I packed up everything I could fit in my car, and I left my home and everything I had behind. And then Kim and Jerry found me, took me in, um, and I started the program. While I was in the program, I got my GED. I got primary custody of my son. I started college to be in recovery. And I started a job as a housekeeper. And I didn't think that job was gonna go anywhere. And the day I graduated, my boss stood up here and told everybody 
that one day I was going to have my own hotel if I wanted that. And today, I run that company and I have that hotel. So, I have my, you know, I have a nice car I never thought I would have. I don't have to worry about where my next high or my next dollar is going to come from. And I never thought I would have that. So I say that not to brag about my accomplishments, but to show you guys there's life after this. There is small things you can do that don't seem like anything that can turn into great things. Um, just one step at a time. I'm really proud of you guys. I know what it took for you guys to get here. I've been there. And if you've made it this far, you've got it. You've got what it takes to make it all the way. My advice would be lean on the friends you've made in here that are dedicated to their sobriety. They're going to help you through things you wouldn't imagine. The drug court team, when they tell you that they're here for you, they mean that. I still call them to this day with my problems. And there's never a time that they're not there for me. So when they tell you that, take advantage of that. They're going to be there and they're going to help you. You don't have to do it alone. And the last thing I want to tell you, because I know for a lot of you this is a really exciting day, but it can also be kind of scary. Because now you're on your own. You have them, but every day you have to make a conscious decision to do the right thing with your own free will. And the thing that I thought about when I was sitting where you guys are, is I don't know very many people that are happy in active addiction, but I don't know a single person that regrets getting sober. And that's all I've got. Thank you guys. And now I would like to introduce Sherry Cook. Um, she and Kim Westfall are the heart and soul of our drug court team. Um, she is going to introduce the team to everyone. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, so we started our program July 11th of 2016, taking people in. And up till today, we had 75 um, graduates. These seven now make 82. Um, I'm so very proud of each and every one of you. Um, we have 48 still programming with us. We have seven being processed and about 15 out either transferred or in rehab somewhere. Um, and in order for this to all work, we have to have a team of people. I cannot do it by myself and, and Kim can do it by herself. Like, there's days we struggle, but we have a team that supports us. They have different perspectives, um, resources to offer. They're awesome. Judge Callahan, Chief Sells, they've been supportive of our drug court, our family treatment court, team court, and our various programs for the kids. Um, thank you for that. We would not be able to do this and help our community um, get sober. Um, BJ, Tanesta, and Sarah McClung, who's now with us, um, they're like the glue that keeps us together. Sarah's just got on board with us, and I think she, she's seeing that um, because I am not organized, not a bit. And I'm not focused, and that's why I have my sidekick, Kim Westfall, with me as well. Um, Stephanie Smith, Raven Allen, Jaron Moreland, um, Aaron Evans, Nick Nutter, thank you for helping with our program and being supportive of us as well. They have their own job duties, but they take the time to help us. Um, Paul Williams, Michael Cox, and Jasmine Morton in the prosecutor's office for referring people to us, as well as public defender's office, Kathleen Murphy, and Joe Mosco. Um, law enforcement, thank you for being on board with us and to participate in our treatment team as well. Jackie Hartsog and Kate Repass are our veteran specialists. Um, they come from Beckley to help us with our veterans. Um, so our hub is our day report center. We cannot do this without them. Um, everything goes through them. They, they, you know, have facilitators for our classes. They have our um, counselors for our therapy. So. Gary Gerald couldn't be with us today. Our heart love goes with him. They had um, a, a family death. Um, Lindsey Brady, Tia Martin, Rob Savine, Ron Proctor, Vicki Underwood, um, Bob Fockler, and Emily Woods are our counselors. Megan uh, Griffith is our peer, uh, recovery sports specialist. Ben Baker, who transports people all over the place to get them to the DRC and take them home until they get their license. Uh, Rhonda Terry, another PRSS, has been working with us as well. Um, Phil Wilson is a local pastor, um, and he reaches out to everyone and any needs that our participants need. 
he finds what they need. I mean, it's been great working with the community and them knowing also that that is where the, their, their belongings, their beds, their dressers, whatever they have, is, you know, they're, they're donating to our people to get back on their feet. Um, also want to thank Camden Clinic, Lifeline, Seneca, St. Joseph's, Recovery, Local church, Churches, Sozo, Reach Up Recovery, um, Recovery Ridge, Recovery Point, for helping um, our community get sober as well. Um, as far as housing, Scott Ellison, John Edwin, Frank Dix, thank you, and I know I'm missing people, I'm sorry. Transportation, MTA, they're awesome. Um, they go beyond, uh, even outside the county, to pick up our people to bring them to um, treatment. Um, as far as food, the local pantry and the senior citizens building, they're always sending food over to our people. Um, and a lot of the employers, and I see Diane at Wendy's, um, Cindy Goodwill, thank you all for you know employing our people, Walmart. Um, it used to be hard for people to get jobs, but it's a lot better now, you know, given a second chance. Um, I don't think I'm missing anybody yet. Please tell me if I am. Um, so I just want to take a minute too and talk to the graduates. You know, when you started, it wasn't easy. Um, it wasn't smooth sailing because we always say, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So we still have those same attitudes, mentality, and manipulation, everything we've done in the past that kept us where, where you were. But you don't have that now, and that's why you're here. You recovered that piece of it, that phase. Now you're, you're keeping your sobriety, and it's up to you to keep that. Remember, people, places, and things. So, um, when we have graduation, we always get them keychains with sayings on them. And so all these words kind of like jumbled together last night when I was writing this. And so here we go. So in the beginning, you knew it wasn't, you wouldn't, you knew it wouldn't be easy, but absolutely worth it. You had to learn to let go of the past for you to reach what was in front of you. You began to see that every day may not be good, but you found good in every day. You realized you got sober to save yourself. And when you did, you found yourself. Still today, you continue to not look back because you're going forward. Always remember, if having one is not enough, have none. Because the greatest gift that you gave yourselves was sobriety. So, um, the meth, the heroin, the fentanyl, which is really aggressive now in our town, um, has taken so many lives, many of your friends. So, I ask when you walk through those doors today that you don't let that happen, that you stay in control. You continue to have the supportive system, you can go to church, you can go to your meetings. Don't let a person take it from you. Surround yourself with positive influences. Don't be in a place that's gonna take it from you. You know where you can go, where you cannot. Don't let certain things take it from you. You are stronger than you know. Use the tools on your belt. We've had the same number for years. Everybody knows our numbers. Day report has open doors. Your family and friends will be there for you. All you have to do is reach out. Don't be afraid to ask if your life begins to spiral. We care about each and every one of them. So since they've been here, they've had um, to do community service, um, they've had their classes, classes in the counseling first and foremost. Um, they've paid their restitution. They've all maintained employment. They have homes, cars, um, and a good support system. So if I can have Judge Callahan come up with me, we can present the class. Michaela, thank you for being here. And Mariah, where are you at? There you are. I don't have my glasses on, but guys, you're doing awesome. And, and we love the support when you guys come here. You're still working for our people and with our people. So we really appreciate it. We love you. Stephanie Amy. <laughs> so one of the things is when they first come to the program, um, all the things that they've lost, they write down on, on the personal inventory that the judge wants us to give them to see how much they gave back. Well, today she has 546 days clean. She also got married. 
631. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm off. So if I'm off, let me know because every day is another day and it counts. Um, but you know, she had, she had lost kids, family, car, money, pride, confidence, home, health, friends, everything. And now look at her now. She's got a job uh, working with one of the dealerships, our dealerships in town. Um, I mean, she's she's really blossomed. Awesome. She's a beautiful person. She's got just so much going for her. Um, I wish you every bit of love, luck, and everything that you want in life that you get. But you're young and you can still do it. Yeah, the first was a little rough, but it does get easier, and it's worth it.
have 560 days of my count. What's your count? I have to look at my phone. We'll May 9th. May 9th. There you <laughs> go. Um, you know, Sandra, she had filled up a page full of things that she's lost. Freedom, children, respect, money, um, opportunities, college, friends, family, property, home. And I mean, it just keeps on going and going. And you know, and I, I look at it and I think, you know, your license, intelligence, uh, honesty, integrity, confidence, you've got all that back. Like you've done really well. I mean, you, we've watched you grow as well and we're very proud of you. We'll I come over here from St. Joseph's and I was in detox and it I felt so bad. I mean I drug myself in here crying and I just want to thank you guys for accepting me into the program because I literally would be dead right now if I hadn't. I was um, in a coma right before that and I was if I didn't quit using I would have died.